strictly street rods. He got wiped out in the four <laughs> Ride Send Ride. I'm at the Northwest Rodorama with uh, Lance Lambert from the Vintage Vehicle Show. Lance, hey. how are you? I'm doing good. Good to see you again. Good, thank you. So we were here last year. Mm -hmm. We got a we got to chit chat and get to know each other a little mm -hmm. bit, which was fun. And when I saw you at Portland Road Show, it was like, hey, I know that guy. Yeah. And I think you said the same. I thing. I did the you same thing, we, and we almost walked right in. It's like boom, there we were. I remember telling my wife, Lance Lambert knows my name. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know my own name. So, <laughs> so we sit there and we're chit chatting, and uh, and I spring on you how, uh, what have you been doing lately? And I go, oh, I was this summer. I got to chase Lamborghinis down the airport in a helicopter, uh, and it's like, you're going, wow, yeah. that's kind of cool. So then we started talking about, well, hey, Lance, you got some stories I bet about things that weren't necessarily car related, and uh, why don't you let a few of them rip, like airplane related? Uh, well. Um we have shot the planes, cars and planes, I, I, some, some name like that, in Pomona, California. And part of the deal at both shows, we, we opened it. I'm in the back of a biplane. and both shows, I had a co-host. And she's sitting next to me. One year it was Chris Burt, and the other one it was uh, Sinye Kiesel. And, but we had the world's, <coughs> excuse me, the world, <laughs> world's smallest camera operator stuff down in between us. I mean, we've got three people in the back seat of a biplane. And uh, so I'm doing the opening. No GoPro? I mean, it's a dude sitting squished in Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Little guy with the camera pointed up at me. Not a GoPro. Um, this is pre-GoPro. But alongside of us is a helicopter with Tim, the producer of the show and, and chief cameraman. He's hanging out the side. We did both of these that way. And I'm looking over at him and thinking... A, I sure hope he doesn't, and he's leaning out of that thing. He's strapped in, but he's, he's going for it. And I'm thinking, I sure hope I don't lose my buddy Tim. But the second thought is, I'm the guy that's going to have to call his wife and say, oh, you know, how'd it go today? Oh, it went great, except your husband fell out of a helicopter. He won't be coming home tonight. So that was, uh, uh, that was, that was, you know, as far as airplanes on the show, that was one of the times. Wow. So, you know, becomes funny after it happens, yeah. but at, at the time, it's like real life. Yeah. Wow, that could have gone wrong. Yeah. So have you ever had a situation? Now, you've been doing this a long time. 24 years. A, 24 years? Mm -hmm. Have you had a situation yet where you were at an event and something kind of went really south? And, you know, I had a guy that wanted to fight me at a show, and uh, that was Boy, pretty... you really got me curious when you say that. <laughs> All the little things. Yeah, yeah. Um, he... Do tell. Okay. Well, it was it was the the Covington Les Schwab Tire Store. It was a car show there, and I was interviewing Ted Paulos, who I had just met him that day, and we later became very close friends over the years. But he had a beautiful '55 Chevrolet, and I wanted to interview him. And he said, "Well, you need to interview the guy that built the car." And uh, the guy's name, his name was also Tim. And I asked Tim if I could do an interview, and he was very firm in the no. And so, okay, fine. But for some reason, I was feeling kind of rude that day, I guess. And every time I saw him at the show, when he'd go by, I would point the mic at him. And, or I'd make like I, and, and he failed to see the brilliant humor. And by the end of the day, he'd had enough of me, and I'm loading up, I had a 60 T-Bird, and we're putting the stuff in the trunk of the T-Bird. And he walks up and he's standing alongside of me. He's not facing me, I'm, I'm facing the trunk, and he's facing the trunk alongside of me. And he says, you know, I could kick your ass if I wanted to. And at that moment, I was pretty convinced he could. And 
<laughs> and uh, I, I stopped bothering him. And the funny thing is, the next time I saw him was in a restaurant, and I gave him a, a hearty hi and hello and shook hands. And from that point on, we were friends. So, wow, that's weird, going yeah. from one moment yeah. potentially one yeah. thing yeah. to another. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and all over just trying to get an, an, an interview. Yeah. Now, I thought I was the only one that got, no, I don't want to do it. I wonder, it actually happens to Lance Yeah, and Lance. he was so emphatic that it's like, why does this guy not want to be seen? But who knows? Do you know who I am? Mm. I'm Lance Lambert from the maybe, Vintage Vehicle Show. Maybe it's on the, TV. Maybe that's why. He didn't want anything to do with me. So. <laughs> well, hey, that reminds me. I just saw this. This, this year, the cool intro for uh, the Northwest Rotter Island. Uh huh. Sounded awesome. Mm -hmm. Did you get on first take? Or, oh, Lord. Because you're kind no. of a first take guy, right? Well, wasn't that time. <laughs> well, they kept changing the, the, script? the script. And they would, well, let's do it this way, and let's do it this way, and let's tweak this, and raise your voice here, and do this. And kind of the punchline to this, and they kept scribbling on the script. And they do part of it where I'd be looking at the camera and just doing the memorized lines, and some of it I'm off camera so I can read it, but it was such a mess. But what they were, um, I don't want to give any, get anybody any trouble here, but there, there's a certain car sales company that has been advertising, I don't know if they're nationwide, but they've been in the Northwest forever. And their spokesperson has a definite style in how he delivers his lines. And I says, I said to the producer, I'm starting to sound like that guy that does that one ad. And the, and the producer's, producer started laughing and said, well, I'm the guy that produces those ads. <laughs> so he was just trying to make me sound like that guy. And when I look at the ad, it's like, yeah, yeah. So. I think I saw a couple of different versions of it. And one of them was like, I'm, I'm Lance Lambert, uh, individual vehicle show. And then the, the final take was, I'm Lance Lambert. I mean, you were you all of a sudden got really happy, and it was un, and fantastic. It comes Thank off you. great, but it is pretty funny, you know, that they're really making the old be happy. You're, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm always more subdued than I think I am. You know, I, I think, well, gee, I, I did that take, and I was pretty energetic, and then I'll see it and go, oh, I wasn't as. And and uh, KZOK, uh, we did some radio spots. And I listen to them, and they sound great. I'm, I'm happy with them, but I'm much more laid back. And doing, <coughs> excuse me, and I didn't cough during those. Uh, during, uh, I, d doing the show all these years, one of the bad habits I have is I tend to reflect the energy level of who I'm interviewing. And if I have you somebody... come up or down. Yeah, which is, I shouldn't be doing that. I should be lifting that other person up when they're down. But sometimes I find that I'm just kind of, you know, so... And that's why when I get somebody that's real high energy, it usually equates to a really good, exciting show. And a lot of information flying well, out. I mean, that commercial got me. It's like, I'm going to go. <laughs> was, was well, cool. apparently it's work because this place was packed today. It looked great. Now, yeah. I haven't been to all of them. I can compare it to last year, and it... It the rumor like was, great. the rumor is, uh, from a reliable source, that they had more people come through the gate by noon today than they had the entire weekend last year. That doesn't surprise me. We were here, and it was packed. It was packed. And I've never, I do a booth here every year selling my books, um, also available on Amazon. And uh, uh, I, I've never had so many people at my booth as I've had this year. Wow. So. That's good. I've I mean, heard every cool. old story about every person's car they have ever owned. So. <laughs> and they got you. You're sitting right there on a yeah, the table, and yeah. it's like there's no way and, out. And I'm very <laughs> flattered that, that they take the time to talk to me. No, so it is. It's, it's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. And you, that's one of the things I've noticed about you is that you're real engaging. You take the time with anyone who was, you know, wants to talk. And you, it's fun subject matter. I mean, it's not yeah. like, you know, you're not yeah. talking about. We like cars, so mm -hmm. when they're bringing that up, it's yeah. fine. So one of the things that I know that you're doing some writing now, and I think you've been for writing uh, yeah. the Seattle, Seattle writing Times. Writing for the Seattle Times. Yeah, uh, which is a big newspaper. Yeah, it's a kind of a big deal. It just fell in my lap. I had done some freelance work for them, but now they're having me do it on a regular basis. And I'm throwing, you know, I have to pitch, uh, you know, they're, they're uh, saying, you know, tell us some ideas, and I tell them some ideas, and they've liked them so far. Uh, and they like the fact that I'm kind of spreading it out age-wise. I've got an article, I have an article coming out about a 16-year-old hot rodder who's very knowledgeable and very experienced. 
Uh, I just did an article, uh, a guy named Art Waller, in fact, the, the Golden Wheels uh, Racing Association or fraternity, they're here today with their sprint cars and stuff out of the 50s and 60s. And uh, Art was uh, 40s, 50s, 60s. Art was one of the, the racers in that. And, and he's 84. And he has more energy than most 54-year-old people. I think it's so. one of the fun things that we get to do is you get to engage all the age levels. And they're, they're all different. All and it fun. doesn't make any difference. In this hobby... I don't care if you're 16 or 96. You know, you, if you're about cars, let's talk. Yeah, you know? and, and they're happy. I mean, even when you bring that up, you talk to that 16-year-old kid, it's like, you know, he's happy about what he's doing. Uh -huh. you, you interview the older guys, they're still into oh, yeah, it. They're, yeah. they're passionate about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. What uh, struck me is I saw that you guys had something that that you're coming up with in a, in a feature article coming up, had mm -hmm. something to do with the like flat racing that they do? Uh, the, bon the Bonneville, you yeah, mean? Just, yeah, yeah. Uh, the North American Eagle, uh, it's Ed Shadle is the fellow's name. It's a, and I know I'm going to get this wrong, but it'll get your 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 viewers and listeners the, the right idea. I think it's like an F-104 or something jet that's basically just been de-winged. And, and, and boy, if Ed's watching this, he's pulling his hair out right now because I probably just really <laughs> messed it up. But they're going for the land speed record, which I think is 735 miles an hour. And he's trying to break that. Uh, he's out of, I think, Parkland. And I'll be doing an article on him real, real soon. Uh, it'll, it's, the article won't come out until June. But... And uh, hey, we're talking, this is the like unlimited class... Fastest, fast, ever. fast as you Top can go. Guys yeah, yeah, on wheels. yeah. I mean, uh, your your people probably have heard of Craig Breedlove, and oh, yeah. and uh, well, he's okay. Well, he's trying to break those records. You know, our our little hometown boy. So, so. is there going to be a perk to that? Do you get to like sit in the back seat of that and he, only have him go like six hundred miles an hour? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They'll lope along at six hundred. Well, I, I don't think it's a two passenger, but uh, you know, maybe I'll get to help push start it or oh, yeah. you know you, singe my hair with a jet thrust or something do, do you get to sit in the car i better yeah, yeah. i mean I, I mean if it's sitting there and it's got a wheel that's like yeah. i'm at least gonna try yeah yeah there, there's over the years i've gotten to i've been able to sit in uh, some pretty cool cars but there have been a few that i haven't they said nope can't sit in it you know so uh, I sat in a funny car, and I love that when uh -huh. they drop. Have you been in one of those where they yeah. drop the thing? Uh -huh. Isn't that yeah, cool? Yeah. Probably the, the coolest thing like that I did, we shot a show at Evergreen Speedway, and it was dwarf cars. You familiar with dwarf oh, cars? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, they're, they're scaled down. They have Suzuki motors in them. And at the, the intermission, it was going to be Lance Lambert from the Vintage Vehicle Show was going to go out and, and race. And I was in... I forgot the fellow's name, but the car was the number two car in the United States in, in that, that form of racing. And the car was, it looked, they make them look like, like 32 Fords and 30, you know, uh, and this looked like a little 32 Ford coupe. And it's really, it's a dwarf car. It's really, really tiny. And, and so they had to take the steering wheel off to, to get in the thing. And before I climb in it, it's like, we don't have a fire suit that'll fit you. And I'm thinking, okay, you're making a choice here. If you cook in this thing, you got nobody to blame but yourself. But I go for it. And they have one other guy, and they said, all right, he's going to be in front of you. And you follow that car wherever he goes. And when you're going around the track, the owner of the car, he's, he's right there in front of the bleachers at the fence. And he said that if, uh, if you want to go faster, if you want the guy in front of you to go faster, because he had a radio to the guy in front, says, uh, put your thumb up, and I'll, I'll radio the guy. If you want to go slower, put your thumb down. If you want off the track, go like this. So we, we go around the track, and I feel like I'm going 200 miles an hour, but I want to go faster. So we go around once. I see the owner of the car. I give him a thumbs up. I never see the guy in front of me again. He is, he is gone. <laughs> and I do my best, and I felt like I was going slower each time, but when I got done, they let me know that I was actually going faster each time, but I was just getting used to the car. And it only hit uh, that my top speed, they said, was 88 miles an hour. But in that little car, that low to the ground on that track, I felt like I was doing 200. But that was really a fun, fun day. You know, just sometimes I can't believe the job I have. There's the, some perks. I yeah, think. yeah. Kind of realistically, that's part of why we're doing what it is. Yeah, yeah. I get paid for this? <laughs> 
Well, um, you got books too. So, it, how many books do you have out right now that they can get on Amazon? Uh, the, the first book, uh, Fender's Fence and Friends: Confessions of a Car Guy, is available on Amazon. The second book, Gears, Grins, and Gasoline: My Wheel Life Adventures, that's available on Amazon. I have another book coming out in about three weeks, which probably by the time people get a chance to see this is out, and that is A Kid's Kingdom Growing Up in the City of Destiny. And for those that don't know, Tacoma has built itself as the city of destiny. I grew up in Tacoma, so it's just a whole lot of little stories, essays about, uh, you know, hiding behind the furnace in my house and kissing Mary Kay O'Reilly, my first girl I ever kissed in first grade at Franklin Elementary School. and and uh, my singing debut at the senior class party, which was a dismal failure. And, and, the uh, voice yeah. has a hard time with oh, the singing. Oh, it was, it was not good. <laughs> it, I'm, I'm, that's been many decades ago, and I'm still taking heat for that uh, You should have just talked that part. I mean, you sound so good talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, uh, it wasn't pretty, but just a whole lot of fun stories and a few warm and fuzzy and... And uh, and then in if all goes as planned in December, train from Tac train from Tacoma Confessions of a Temporary Hobo comes out, and in 1968 me and three buddies hopped freights from Tacoma to Mexico, got apartments in Mazatlan, lived there for a while, and then I hitchhiked back, and to this day I have I and I've traveled all over Europe several times and all over the United States, but to this day, nothing has matched that. That adventure, riding those trains wow. and hitchhiking back. Wow. It was, that's saying stuff because you've lived a little. Yeah. It's, so that's, that's it's saying fun. something about that. It's been fun. Well, thank you so much for doing the show. Thank you very over. much. Looking forward to seeing you again, buddy. Okay. All right. Thank you. See you guys next time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.